For this lesson, I'm going to cover the seven domains of a typical IT infrastructure. Here we have the seven domains. The user domain, workstation domain, LAN domain, LAN to WAN domain, WAN domain, system application domain, and the remote access domain. The user domain covers all the users, all ranks that have access to the other seven domains. They may be users, employees, contractors, consultants. The old phrase that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link applies to IT security too. People are often the weakest link in IT security. You could have the strongest technical and physical security available. However, if personnel don't understand the value of security, the security can be bypassed. For example, technical security can require strong complex passwords that can be easily cracked. However, a social engineer attack can convince an employee to give up the password. The risks in this domain are, users can destroy data and applications intentionally or unintentionally and delete all files. A user can find that his girlfriend had cheated on him. In revenge, he uses her password to delete all her work so that she would get fired. Users can insert infected CDs or USB drives into the work computer. Lastly, social engineering attacks represents a big vulnerability in this domain. The workstation is the end user's computer. It is a computer of an individual user where the production takes place. The workstation is susceptible to malicious software, also known as malware. If antivirus software isn't installed, the workstation is vulnerable. The workstation is also vulnerable if it is not kept up to date with recent patches. The risks are, the workstation operating systems can have a known software vulnerability that allows a hacker to connect remotely and steal data. A workstation's browser can have a software vulnerability which allows unsigned scripts to silently install malicious software. A workstation's hard drive can fail causing loss of data. Computers that aren't patched can be exploited. If they don't have antivirus software, they can become infected. The LAN domain is the area that is inside the firewall. It can be a few systems connected together in a small home office network. It could also be a large network with thousands of computers. It contains all the workstations, hubs, switches, and routers. The LAN is a trusted zone. The risks in this domain are a worm can spread through the LAN and infect all computers in it. LAN server OS can have a known software vulnerability. An unauthorized user can access the organization's workstation in a LAN. Weak passwords can be cracked. The LAN to WAN domain connects the local area networks to the wide area networks. The LAN domain is considered a trusted zone because it is controlled by a company, whereas the WAN domain is considered an untrusted zone because it is not controlled and is accessible by hackers. The area between the trusted and untrusted zones is protected with one or more firewalls. This is also called boundary or the edge. Security here is referred to as boundary protection or edge protection. The risks in this domain are a hacker can penetrate your IT infrastructure and gain access to your internal network. Weak ingress and egress traffic filtering can degrade performance. If users are allowed to visit malicious websites, they can mistakenly download malicious software. A firewall with unnecessary ports open can allow access from the internet. The WAN domain. WAN stands for Wide Area Network and consists of the internet and semi-private lines. The risk in this domain are service providers can have a major network outage. A file transfer protocol server that allows anonymous uploads can host wars from black hat hackers. Wars is a term that describes pirated files. Examples include pirated games, MP3 files, and movies. A WARS site often includes hacking tools, which can be downloaded, as well as including hackers. Next, servers can receive a denial service attack or distributed denial service attack. And the FTP server can allow anonymous uploaded illegal software. The systems and application domain refers to servers that host server-level applications. Mail servers receive and send email for clients. Database servers host databases that are accessed by users, applications, and other servers. 
and domain name systems DNS servers provide names to IP addresses for clients. Therefore, this domain is made up of user access servers such as emails and databases. The risks in this domain are a fire can destroy primary data center, a denial of service attack can cripple the organization's email server, a database server can be attacked by SQL injection, corrupting the data. In an SQL injection attack, the attacker can read the entire database, and SQL injection can also modify data in the database. Remote access domain is the domain in which a mobile user can access the local network remotely using a virtual private network, known as VPN. A VPN provides access to a private network over a public internet. VPN connections use tunneling protocols to reduce the risk of data being captured. A tunneling protocol encrypts the traffic sent over the network. This makes it more difficult for attackers to capture and read the data. However, vulnerabilities exist at two stages of VPN connection. The first stage is authentication. Authentication is when the user provides credentials to prove identity. If these credentials can be discovered, the attacker can later use them to impersonate the user. The second stage is when a data is passed between the user and the server. If the data is sent in clear text, an attacker can capture and read the data. So the risks in this domain are communication circuit outage can deny connection. Remote users may be infected with a virus and not be aware of it. So when they try to connect to the internal network through remote access, the virus can infect the entire network. Remote communication from office can be unsecured and VPN tunneling between remote computer and ingress and egress router can be hacked. Well, that's it for the seven domains of a typical IT infrastructure. Hopefully this gave you a better understanding of it and showed you exactly what each domain is as well as the risk and weaknesses involved in them. All right, thank you for watching.